Well, Mary, these are our raised beds. And then do you grow most of your vegetables in these raised beds? Yes, except for the viney things. They go down on the ground over behind the beds. Why did you decide to use raised beds? <laughs> well, um, I get tired of picking weeds, bending over to pull weeds and bending over to look for beans and everything like that. And usually around August, I would just mow over the whole thing because I got tired of it. And so my husband for Mother's Day made me a set so that it, they're height, the right height so I can sit there and pick the weeds right out of them and I have no more excuses. What did you use to build the beds? Well, uh, this is our second set of beds. We had another one that it wasn't quite as heavy duty and we found out that soil is heavier than we thought. And so a few planks would start falling down and, and yeah, they lasted about three years. And so uh, my husband and the kids made really heavy duty ones out of these and uh, they're much more supported underneath. And, and, I, and I try with my soil to uh, put vermiculite and perlite in it. So it, it can add aeration, but also um, not be as heavy into these beds. I noticed that there seems to be a plastic liner on here too. Why is that? I didn't want the water and the soil to uh, corrode the wood. So I have them on the sides and then we have the weed mat that water actually goes through on the bottom. So then I also know when I'm done watering, I'll see water trickling out the bottom. So I, I know they're saturated or, you know, they have a good water supply then. That's what my next question was going to be is how do you water? Well, we did try uh, with the soaker hoses and that was fun. It, it, they worked great. You turn them on and, and the hoses would just water everything. But um, putting them away for winter, taking them back out in the spring and we have a lot of rust in our waters that would kind of get in there. So we just went back to let's put a sprinkler out. I noticed that underneath here you have some stone pads. Is that to help keep them from sinking? Yes, yes, because when you have, like I said, these get really heavy and when you only have a four by four area going onto the soil, it, they do start sinking. So we put the, the stone underneath. So wherever my husband mows, I go back with a rake and rake it all up and throw it on top of here and it's my cheap mulch. There's not a lot left uh, by the end of the season and it just gets tilled in. I would like to, to be more like a no-till gardener, but I'm not there yet. Uh, what we do here is um, the next spring we'll add more compost and maybe a little bit of miracle Grow, And then I just take a trowel in my hands and start, it's fun playing in the soil in the beginning of spring, you know, and just mix it all up. How do you fertilize the beds? When in the spring, I'll add the compost and the miracle Grow. And sometimes during the season, if they look in a little peak, at all, I'll add some more. The one, one problem with adding the mulch from the grass is it has weed seed in it. So it, it does, but I mean, really, all I do is, is this and it's gone. So <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's actually kind of, you know, getting away from everything, come out here and just pull a few weeds. Are there some plants that do better than others in the raised beds? Yes, uh, I don't put potatoes up here. And there's certain ones that, uh, like the vines, so cantaloupe and uh, watermelons and things like that, I'll go put over there. Do you have any trouble with critters since it's a raised bed? Well, since our dog has gotten older, um, we uh, ha now have deer around here. And so we have a mama deer and her, her fawn, and she thought that the broccoli cauliflower tasted really good and totally nipped them to the bud. So a friend of mine who is also a master gardener uh, told me to put in um, Irish Spring and to cut it up into bigger chunks. So if it's smaller chunks, then the water will, you know, as it rains, it will disintegrate faster. So I guess something about the smell they don't like. And so I put those around. And then I also put, I went online and it said coyote urine. So it's, it's not as smelly as you think it would be. <laughs> and it's in granules and I just kind of sprinkle it around. But now that they're bigger, she hasn't, uh, done any damage to the, my, to the garden at all. And as a scientist, I should have only tried one and to see which one was working. But you know, you, I, I don't want to wait till the middle of the season to figure it out. So I just put them both out. At the end of the year, do you do anything special for the fall or for overwintering here? Uh, I try to leave as much of these stalks and, and leaves on the top. Um, I don't kill out any of the ants that are there or the, you know, the weeds. By the end of the season, I'll let them grow. 
because the roots are really good at structuring the soil and they add a lot of microbiology to the soil. And so I, I try to not really touch it in the fall and winter. And then in the spring, then I dig them up and um, start again. And that's why I said I'd like to try no-till, but just not there yet. Another reason why I leave my residue on the surface over winter is so that I can remember where I planted things because I want to rotate what plants I put in there. I know that um, I need to rotate through these beds and I've seen a lot better results when I do that. Because they're raised beds, do these warm up faster than the ground? That's a good question. Um, I, would, I would think they would, but I've never stuck a, a thermometer in to find out. I, I'm a soil scientist. I should, <laughs> I should try that. <laughs> How early do you usually plant your beds? Some people start everything inside, like their peas and stuff, and I'm more of a casual gardener, a hobbyist. Uh, so I will come out here around Mother's Day, a little after Mother's Day. So for a present, my husband and the kids take me out to buy all my plants and everything, and then uh, that's when we plant them. But this year, that was a little uh, early. And so I had to replant, and then the deer came by, and I had to replant again. <laughs> Jesse helps me with uh, getting them ready, like putting the compost in and more vermiculite and just kind of, you know, lightening up the soil and getting it ready. But the rest of it I do myself. He has another 20 acres he has to take care of. <laughs>